scales can have dials or digital readouts, and they come in a wide range of capacities, from your common 20 pound or 10 kilogram grocery model, to heavy duty 600 pound or 272 kilo scales designed to pull their weight in industry. The weight of produce hanging in the pan pulls on a pair of springs inside the scale. They move the various internal components that turn the pointer to the corresponding weight mark on the dial. To make the scale's frame, a press stamps a steel plate five times, progressively cutting and bending it into the final frame shape. A washer goes into each steel spring. They turn it up or down to adjust the spring's tension. That's how they'll calibrate the scale later. The top part of each spring will bolt to the frame, and the bottom part to this slider, a long metal component with weight markings. Next, they attach a component called a rack to one end of the slider, securing the screw tightly with thread locking fluid. The rack's teeth will mesh with this pinion gear and turn it. They install one end of the pinion into the frame. Then they screw on a metal bridge to support the other end. They insert the slider with the rack attached through the bridge. Now when you pull on the slider, the pinion turns. Next, they attach the springs to the frame and slider. Each spring in this imperial scale supports up to 20 pounds, making this a 40 pound scale. When weight pulls on the springs, they move the rack, which turns the pinion, which rotates the scale's pointer. A press stamps out the dial face from a steel plate. After painting it white, they print on the markings with a silk screen press. They insert a spring to prevent the rack from slipping on the pinion. Then they put the face over the bridge so that the pinion protrudes through a hole in the middle. A guide helps them align the face so that the zero will be in the right spot. Then they tighten two screws to attach the face. A press stamps the pointer from a thin sheet of aluminum. Using a special tool, they twist the end, forming a thin tip that won't obscure the fine line to which the pointer's pointing. Next, a coat of red paint, so the pointer will stand out against the black and white face. Once the paint's dry, they mallet the pointer onto the pinion. Now they hang the pan on the scale and turn a little screw in the slider to adjust the pointer to zero. This ensures the scale will weigh just the produce rather than the produce and the pan. Now they calibrate the scale. To do this, they load it with weights to full capacity, which is 40 pounds for this scale. If the pointer doesn't indicate 40 pounds on the nose, they turn the washer in each spring to adjust the resistance. Then they adjust the pointer back to zero again. This is what they call a double dial scale, meaning it has a face and pointer on each side. They install the second dial on the opposite end of the pinion, so that the two pointers move in unison. They close up the space between the two dials with a strip of white plastic. This sash ring, as it's called, has grooves for the dials and for the transparent plastic cover that goes over them.